be a quick tutorial on how I would make a stamp or a brand with my CNC machine. I'm using Aspire. This should work uh, with VCarve Desktop and VCarve Pro. Um, you might be able to draw some parallels across any other um, art designing software, but this is the tool that I have, so this is what I use. I'm going to set up my material in Aspire, 2 inches by 2 inches. Realistically, we're probably going to use about 1 inch, 1 inch circle of this. I know I have some 38 hundredths material sitting outside, so I'll have it set at 38 hundredths. My machine bed will be where I set my zero datum, just because it's going to be a through cut at the end of this. And I'm going to go to the bottom left. That's just where I normally set all my stuff. You can set yours wherever you want. First thing I want to do is set up the one inch circle. So this is draw circle. We have one inch set. We'll apply that. Let's go ahead and center this. So you can grab the align selected objects and align to material. Puts it in the center. We're going to import a vector. I'm going to use my shop logo just because it's already a vector. I don't have to vectorize it. And we are not going to use all of this. This will get very crowded inside of such a small stamp. So we're going to delete some of this. we got to clean this up. There's a couple things we have to do to this as well. So I'm going to make it just the bud region of my logo. Try not to cross the boundary of the circle. A little bit bigger. Okay, that should be close enough. We'll go ahead and ungroup this. My battery's running low. Let's go ahead and make sure we're plugged in. Plugged in now. So once this is ungrouped, we're going to go ahead and select the stuff I do not want. So I know I don't know under chills, and I know I don't want my shop portion. We're also going to cut the branch off. So we're going to draw a line across here. Close that. We'll go our, our, get our snipping tool out. Interactive trim. Make sure rejoin trimmed sections is selected. Select that, 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 and that. Go ahead and close this. That rejoins all the vectors that were snipped. We'll make sure this is separate. It is. We'll go ahead and delete it. We're not going to use any of that. All right, that looks pretty centered, pretty square. I like how this looks so far. Again, we are going to make a stamp. So any image that we put on this is going to be inverted when you put it on the material. So we'll go ahead and group this back. And we're going to mirror images. I'm going to flip it right. I don't want this one. We'll go ahead and bring this one in. I'm manually setting this because my align to selection makes this go off center and outside of the circle. So we manually did that. Next thing I want to do is make sure I have a solid perimeter and it'll make sense here shortly. So when I grab this perimeter, I notice that some of this inside stuff gets grabbed. I don't want that. So I need to come in here and bridge that. Same process as last time. We're going to go ahead and draw a line. This is so small it really doesn't matter. And if you hit space bar, it'll let you draw new lines. We'll get the interactive trim back out. Close those. And looks like we closed it out. Make sure we have a full border. And we do. That looks good. All right, next thing I want to do is grab everything. And we're going to use a V-carve on this. We'll go ahead and grab our V-carve setting. And it's important to grab that outside circle. Otherwise, it'll v-carve just the rows. I want it to v-carve everything but the rows. So grab our v-carve tool. I'll be using a 6-degree v-bit. I want to set my flat depth to a maximum of a tenth of an inch. Whatever your preference is, you can set it to that. Once again, I have not cut this yet. I'll find out if it works tomorrow. I'm using these parameters. Looks good. And calculate. This is going to tell me that my my logo has some open vectors. So we'll go to Vector Validator. We'll search selected vectors and fix the zero links. And calculate. Shouldn't give us that error message anymore. 
we'll preview the toolpath. That looks pretty clean. Let's go back to our 2D view. Next thing I want to do is offset this slightly because I want to clear out everything else. These areas in here, I want, I want to get rid of this. So that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to offset this by call it 0.15. That gives us the at least the distance of an eighth inch end mill. Lost my mouse. Close that. So I want to grab this. And this is why it was important to get that solid border. Because I want to pocket all of this inside. So we'll go ahead and grab a pocket. I'm going to set this to a tenth of an inch. I'm using an eighth inch end mill. We'll go ahead and calculate this as well. Preview visible toolpath. All right, now we have a stamp. This outline right here is what I want to use for the entire piece. So we'll go ahead and run a profile. I want this to go all the way through. I'm using my eighth inch end mill again. It'll be two passes. So that makes sense. Passes the sniff test. And I want to add ramps to my toolpath. Two inches might be a little excessive for this. So we'll go ahead and use a one inch toolpath or one inch ramp. Go ahead and calculate this. Preview visible toolpath. And so far, so good. If you wanted to make this look like a ring, it's pretty simple. And just because I have it here, we're going to go ahead and do this. So you can stop here, save this, and you have the stamp to go cut. Again, I'm probably going to cut this tomorrow, and it will be another add-on video of how this works. I want to make a ring for this to attach to. So the next thing I will go and do is grab our line toolpath again. I'm just going to draw a line across here to make a flat. We're going to get our interactive trim back out. Close that, join that. We'll grab these two. We're going to do another profile cut. And outside, creates. Oh, that looks good. We're going to go ahead and calculate this. We'll reset our preview and not only want to view this preview visible toolpath. Delete this and delete that. And now you can glue your stamp to that face right there and sand the inside of this. And you should have a pretty good ring or whatever you want so long as the inside diameter is whatever size your finger is. If this helped you out, please give me a thumbs up and a like. Go ahead and share it if you want. Um, and again, the next video will probably be me cutting this to see if it actually works. <laughs>